inviting me today and for to Dario to our, for our organizing this talk. So my name is Alexander Pelov and I work at uh, Telecom Britannia at the Department of Network Security and Multimedia. And I'm going to be talking about our work on smart grids and how we can approach this problem for a uh, network perspective. So how we can get all the, the things we already know and how we can enter into this huge field of research. So um, this is a very short outline of today's talk and uh, if you want to keep it uh, interactive I'll be very happy if you have some questions or if you go uh, want to get more into detail in, into something I say or if you disagree uh, you, I'll be very happy to, to discuss it uh, on the spot. So the first thing I'm going to talk a little bit about is what, are, what is the smart grid and where are the networking problems in the smart grid. Of course this is going to be a non-exhaustive thing. And uh, then I'm going to pass on some of the projects we are currently having in Telecom Britannia and uh, some of the, the preliminary results we are having. So um, uh, hopefully at the end of this talk we will have some ideas so or what are the possibilities on which we can eventually collaborate and uh, uh, maybe on which you can also start your, your own work. Now I, I think that most of you have already heard uh, some things about smart grids so if you feel very uh, annoyed about this uh, I, I hid a small photo of a cat on one of the slides so this way you can search it in order to stay focused and not fall asleep. So, what is the smart grid? Well, actually it's a very wide thing. Normally, I, I have never heard a person give one the definition of the smart grid. and uh, uh, So I, I always want to start with the dumb grid, so the power grid, the actual power grid, which is actually the most complex uh, system in the world that exists. Of course it depends on how you define complexity, but uh, basically you have uh, four uh, different parts. You have the generation part, so you have some power plants that are uh, very centralized that generate a lot of power. And then the power is pushed through the transmission lines, so the trans transmission system, uh, over a very high voltage lines to the distribution system, where it is a medium voltage or low voltage, and it is then uh, fed to the customers, <coughs> which are the, the final uh, destination of this, of this power. So this is an extremely complex system and very delicate one because at every point of time you have to match the exact consumption in the grid. So if you have a lamp turning on somewhere, uh, on the generation part, a generator has to turn a little bit more fast in order to generate the same power that has been used. So you need to have a very uh, uh, sophisticated system actually in order to keep all this in balance at all times. So here you have few generating powers, a meshed network of, uh, that, uh, that uh, connects the power plants to the distributing system and then like a tree structure that goes into, uh, into the neighborhoods and, and so forth to, get, to distribute the energy. So this thing works quite well. I mean we have electricity and at least in Europe it's really, in, in, the, in the western world it, it works very well. So what are the primary drivers? to change this thing? Why do we want to make it smarter? Uh, even though it's extremely intelligent already. So, of course the answer is always look at the money, where the monies are. So it is basically all the, 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 the concept has been uh, really put on the table as a smart grid uh, from in, the, in the USA. And I hope this Kathleen will <laughs> correct me if this is not if it, this is not so, but I believe that this is the USA where uh, year of, years of underinvestment have um, led that, to the fact that uh, there are some reliability issues with the, with the power grid. And in order to overcome all this, you either have to put a huge amount of money to basically put a lot of new infrastructure, or you have to uh, try to think of some intelligent ways to make do with to make do with all you have already and uh, keep the, the grid functioning. So basically the, 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 the whole smart grid concept starts from here and in the different parts of the world you have different primary motivations. In Europe it's a lot of the 2020 agenda and the whole green things that you know we have to integrate all the green stuff and that we want to increase the efficiency 
and so forth. In Africa, you have you don't have you have places where you don't have a big grid that works so well, so you need to have some local concepts. In India, you have a lot of electricity theft, so you need to account. You need to to try to fight over this. So you have a lot of different uh, drivers for this, and the major challenges actually are. Uh, uh, Integrating, I mean, you have different challenges in the different parts of the power grid. On the generation side, is basically integrating the huge power winds, uh, wind, um, the, the, the huge uh, wind generation uh, uh, facilities. On the distribution part, it is quite interesting because you have to integrate uh, electrical vehicles, the, the, the forthcoming electrical vehicles, which are actually big consumers, and if you just uh, introduce 2 million electrical vehicles as it is the plan in France, then you are basically increasing the whole consumption in the network and you have to upgrade the whole distribution network or you have to find a way to, uh, to communicate with the vehicles and to tell them when to charge and when not to charge. Uh, improve efficiency, uh, include uh, power, uh, solar panels and so forth. And the interesting part is actually also in the consumer side because now we can introduce the concept of actually asking the user to change their behavior. So in the classical grid, we have a, uh, uh, we have the consumers that uh, are basically have a varying uh, they represent a varying load, and we try to satisfy this load at all at all costs. And the power plants we control everything that happens on the, on the, on the power generation side. So uh, the only variation comes from the consumer side and we uh, completely uh, master how the, the, the generation part. Now with renewable energies where things can vary quite rapidly, we have variation on the generation side, which is something quite new. And we are going to ask the consumers to actually change their ways of consuming, which is also a very new concept. Until now, it is the consumer is God, and um, we cannot touch him. So it is a quite challenging thing, and uh, actually, this is uh, a quite a complicated slide. But I uh, I've put it here only because I uh, I wanted to point here the uh, the primary technology, the, the enabling technologies for all these good things we want here. So these are the functions we want from the, from the smart grid that are going to imp improve our efficiency, that are going to enable to uh, integrate renewable uh, integration, are going to allow us to integrate uh, electrical vehicles and, and so forth. So the thing is that the enabling uh, functions are, well, smart meters and communication networks. And we have some business logic here. So. Uh, Basically, what we have is some intelligent devices, the communication networks, and some algorithms that are going to allow us to do this. So, if you want, for me personally, the, the definition that I like the most of uh, what is the smart grid is, it is just an evolution of the existing power grid. In a lot of the things we say about the smart grid, in, the, in, uh, in, in, in some countries, they, they are already there. But, in general, it's evolution of the power grid that is the power grid plus two-way communications with all devices that are part of the grid, plus big data. Now, big data is, of course, data mining and all the algorithms, so I'm not going to talk about this. I'm just using a buzzword to, uh, in order to you know, wake you up a little bit. And I'm going to focus on the two-way communications part, so the, communica the communicating network part. So the, the question here is, uh, when you start reading about this, you get the, the impression that almost everything exists. All the, network, all the networking technologies are already there, and uh, you have all the interfaces, and um, basically you just only need to go and buy some equipment and just configure it, and it, it will all work. And this is actually um, the reference architecture that, is, uh, that has been defined by NIST, and which is uh, uh, the architecture that is most frequently, uh, frequently used and that actually captures th this evolution of the power grid. So here we have the four classical domains, uh, generation, transmission, distribution, and customer, and you have here the power flow, so the energy flow. And here we have some new domains that they actually somehow existed already in the classical way, and here we 
the, 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 the new thing is all the communication flows. So now if you take, if you make an abstraction actually of the, of the power grid by itself and on the algorithms, you see that there are really huge uh, communication flows that we need to define some way and that we need to, uh, to secure and that we need to, to put in place. And so you see this and then you go to the IEEE and they give you, oh, here we have all the solutions out there. So you have, here is the connection uh, to the, these are the connections to the distribution system and the, and the transmission system. Uh, so the generation and the transmission, here you have the distribution system and here you have the consumer part. And you basically have to just pick your technology and you're off to set, you're, you're, you're good to go. Here you have another paper that does the, does the same thing. So basically, you may, we may almost say that, okay, it's only integration part. Or maybe not quite. So <clears throat> this is actually a thing that Cisco uh, published in the beginning of this year, and it's like a, a general reference model that takes all the parts of the smart grid and puts IP on all of this. And it's, uh, I think it's 13 layers or 11, I think it's 13 layers, so it's quite big. <laughs> uh, it's actually, a, uh, yeah, you, you cannot put it on one slide unless you do something like this, but uh, it's not uh, quite readable. But um, just to say that it's an extremely complex system and you actually need to go and study all of these uh, elements. And by just seeing this, uh, actually the, the only thing that this gives you is that you can put IPv6 everywhere. And that IPv6 is uh, like a, a light motif that can, that can allow you to connect all the devices and and so forth, but you still need to do a lot of work in order to get this uh, working. So, uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, yes, uh, of course. It's more about uh, policies and politics. Yeah. Because there, there has been a, a, a trial in France that EDF wanted to uh, to use the home home plug uh, uh, medium voltage, yeah. which is uh, an already existing technology for medium voltage uh, uh, power line communication, and uh, the European. Uh, came through uh, saying, no, you are not a telco. So uh, you cannot, there is a question on, uh, uh, we can use a home plug, uh, the PLC line at home, because yeah. we own the network, but not outside it. So uh, all, all the technology is uh, really uh, open, but in fact, you, you cannot integrate it uh, because of because this. Uh, okay, um, actually, I'm, I'm not sure if it's about home plug or is it just PLC? Because uh, we are actually... It's, it's, a, it's PLC for uh, medium voltage. For so it, it's not a low voltage at home PLC, but uh, where you could uh, distribute... Uh, it's in the distribution network, in the medium PLC. Yes. So uh, actually we're, we're working on a, on a project like this for, for this type of communication technology. It is uh, called uh, G3 PLC. So it's not uh, home plug, basically. Mm. It's uh, an, an alternative and it's low bandwidth. Uh, so it's it's narrow uh, narrow bandwidth uh, technology. It's low um, low throughput technology, and uh, I, I'm not aware of this because they are actually deploying it already. It's uh, ER, it's ERDF ERDF, the ERDF that ERDF that is deploying this. Uh, maybe okay. it was something old or but is it uh, something like on uh, experimental? It, it, for the moment, it's experimental, but it's going to come to whole France. So this is actually one of the problems by 2020. We have to have 35 million uh, smart meters deployed in France. With uh, CC, or black CC, like it's a yeah, very yeah. low bandwidth. With a very low bandwidth, exactly. Yeah. And because they, they couldn't put the high bandwidth, they, they, they can technically, but uh, politically they, they couldn't. Yeah. Actually, I'm not aware of this political issue. It, it is quite possible, but this is actually... Okay, Let, let's say that this is perfect illustration here. I. Uh, I, uh, I wanted just to say that the utilities are in a, in a not very enviable position because on one point they need to increase the energy efficiency, on the others they need to cope with all the politics, and on the third point they need to be uh, competing with the te telecommunication companies because telecommunication companies are very aggressive and they want to capture the, the market. So whenever the utilities open their offering, they are actually competing with the telecommunication companies 
and you have, a, a, of course, a lot of policy problems, as, as you said. So, one of the things is that uh, you, we, you have actually the money pressure, as, as they call it, is that you have a lot of money that you need to you need to spend, you need to get it. I mean, there is like a big funding that comes from the from the state, and they say, okay, if you deploy X meters in this time, we are going to give you the money. If you don't deploy it, we are not going to give you. So you are, you have incentive to uh, to not really spend a lot of time thinking about the problems, but just say, okay, I'm going to do this, and <laughs> it works mostly most of the time. So don't don't talk me about anything else. So. A lot of standards here. It's uh, just to see that there are some there are open issues, and most of the technologies exist. But of course, <coughs> it always comes to down to how do we really implement the things. And our contributions are uh, something I put it applied Internet of Things. Is we take a lot of the concepts of, from the Internet of Things and really put it, put them to work. So really implement the protocols really see how the things work, really go and uh, implement it on, on the devices. And uh, we, uh, the, the approaches is actually uh, going in twofold. So from one part, it's very important to have some industrial partners, because otherwise you don't have the, the credibility. And this is uh, a lesson I, I learned from Catherine. <laughs> on, the, on the other part is also trying to work with the community, because Internet of Things is something that is coming, uh, I mean, it's, all, it's already almost here, and there are a lot of uh, communities that need uh, this type of technologies. So we're working in both of these areas, and, uh, and so at this point, I hope I, I managed to explain a little bit what is the smart grid, and uh, that there are some networking problems to be uh, to be decided, even though if I, I did not give you anything specific. And now I hope that I'm going to give you some specifics about this by pointing out on some of the projects on which we are working. So, if we take here a very schematic thing where we have two utilities, let's say there are more utilities, maybe in France there is only one very, very big and a couple very, very small, and Okay, you have some power transmission between the utilities and so forth. Then you have the distribution network, and here you have, it. and here you have some prosumers. That the, so these are some users that can consume and that they, they can produce. And you have uh, the internet and the cloud. Let's see. So the point where uh, we, as a communication, uh, as a networking people, can can help, uh, can, can can contribute something reasonable is at the homes, with, uh, in the communication part between the prosumers and the utilities, and of course by taking this into the cloud and running some algorith algorithms there and optimizing things. So if we take more detail, more closely to this, we have a substation and over there we have the utility that gives us a lot of power. Then we have here, the distribution network with all the users that may have some electrical cars and, and so forth. And we are communicating with them through the PLC, maybe, through the medium voltage PLC, or maybe through a wire, uh, wireless network in a meshed fashion. If we look most, more closely to the home, we have the, uh, the home network, we have the smart meter that, act, that can act as a, uh, as a gateway between the power network and the utility <coughs> network, because here the thing will be very, very controlled, under control of the utility <coughs> network, and uh, the smart meter is actually the, the point that can potentially communicate with the house. And in the house you have your network with your tablet, with your energy box, with maybe with your internet gateway. You have the electrical vehicle that is going to be, uh, to be communicating with all this, and of course, at some far future, distant future, we may imagine that we have the cloud uh, with where we can we, we can run some more advanced algorithms uh, related to the to the home network. Uh, now, uh, I have prepared actually uh, this presentation as uh, uh, giving a little bit more examples on the project on which we are working, but I think I'll, I'll skip this and I'm, I'm going to go 
directly to the to a more interesting uh, to, to a more concrete examples. So um, the first one is uh, this little project on which we are working uh, since uh, one year and a half now. So it's called uh, Smart TV, and it's about uh, submetering. So this uh, project is uh, putting uh, uh, smart camp. It started as a smart campus project on uh, uh, on our in our university, and in the end, uh, it, we just wanted to go and be able to measure the power used. Uh, I mean, to quantify our energy energetic um, footprint and eventually to control it. So uh, our approach is to use open and community-oriented approach. So we work a lot with uh, uh, with different uh, schools, with different uh, small companies in order to do, to develop all this. And we have um, developed smart plugs and power meter uh, and, and power meter. Uh, and so we are, we have uh, smart plugs, which are things you put uh, between you know you plug into into your power plug, and then you you plug uh, some device in, into it, and you can observe the consumption of that device. Or you can observe the power meter at the entry of your home, and uh, of course you can apply to a campus, to your private house, and so forth. And we won actually the uh, appel à innovation uh, this year uh, for so for, from the Institut Telecom, and we're going to be able to continue working on in 2013, which is great. So this is an example of the things you put on your existing power meter in your house. So it is a very simple thing, which uh, just counts the number of times the, the, there is a light, uh, there is a LED that, that blinks uh, on every watt consumed. And through a, a wireless sensor network, we communicate with the device and we, we put this on a website. So you have this one, and then we have developed three prototypes of power plugs. So we start with something that resembles an octopus or something like this and now we are waiting for the third version of that thing so the third version is going to provide us with uh, a lot of possibility to, to measure to measure things and uh, and from, from architectural point of view actually it is uh, it is quite interesting uh, because we are uh, basing, of course, everything is based on IP. Uh, we are using uh, six low band for adaptation to lossy and um, uh, low bandwidth uh, networks. We have develop, developed an open source adaptation to this for ultra constrained devices, which is available on this side. And uh, if we go up to the to, uh, on the layers, we are using a RESTful architecture as it is. Uh, uh, required also as it is promoted by the HCM2M um, working group uh, where you based on co-op which is a constraint application protocol something like HTTP it's based on uh, the principles are like HTTP principles but it's a binary uh, protocol so and it's uh, not or, uh, based on TCP it's based on UDP so if, if you want some details on this we can discuss it and uh, it, uh, it uses, uh, we can use multiple physical air communications so, uh, via Mac. So for the moment we're using IEEE 802.15.4, but we can use some other standards and also Dash 7. Dash 7 is actually promoted by a, a startup company in uh, the TPT uh, uh, incubator. So that's why, that's why I mentioned it. Hey, um, sorry, yes. just wanted to say something. Yeah. So how do you communicate? Uh, I understand machine to machine, but where is in your house the gateway that also talks uh, fifteen point four, in order to for you to send uh, the smart metering out to the web, because there's something missing there. So you're talking how? You you need a gateway. I mean you need yeah. you need to put a gateway that is Which then you connect. But you have this physical installed some. Okay. Yes. Yes, we have it in next to your your box or next mm. next to your free box or something. And it's uh, Ethernet to. Uh, I mean, yeah, because you also mentioned Bluetooth, so at a given point you could have an app over your smartphone yeah. that does the gateway. But uh, I mean, so for the time being, you have a 
physical for, for, device. For the, for the time being, it's, it's a physical <coughs> device. Yeah. And so we, we have so we, we we also have worked on the visualization part, and we have a website uh, which is also use uses open source. Uh, everything is open source, and, uh, so if you want to to uh, uh, to fork it, yeah, here is the link. And so uh, basically, this is uh, the thing you see. Uh, it is uh, from from our uh, department in REN. So for the moment, we are, for the moment, we are observing only a few parameters. The coffee maker. Uh, we have a bike and some guys that are playing from time to time. So you can observe everything in real time. This is from uh, one of our colleagues that is observing his home. So this is uh, esti the estimation of the price he's paying uh, for this. And you have the consumption is his in his house and the temperature. So it is uh, quite a flexible, um, quite a flexible uh, visualization uh, uh, suit. I don't know. Yeah, I have maybe. Okay, so this is the first project that is very community oriented, and you can really um, uh, where, where we take all the things we have developed uh, with uh, well, mostly developed by Laurent, all the things that were developed to uh, in terms of protocols, in terms of uh, of uh, knowledge about uh, wireless sensor networks, to take this and apply it to to this application. Yeah. The, the, the purpose of that is not to produce this kind of things, it's to produce disaggregation, right? To basically, mm -hmm. instead of having one aggregate load, like mm -hmm. the, 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 the blue one, you would want to understand from more more with a much lower granularity. Right? So you don't have result on that yet, but that's the point. That, right? that's, that's the point. Thank you. So yeah. can, you, can you install that in a home already? Or? Yes, yes, we, okay. we started. Uh, there are maybe, I mean, it's a small uh, number of people that have installed it to really work this thing out. So, uh, as you said, the, the, the ideal thing is at the end to be able to say, okay, this here is the, the heating and here it is the TV and so forth, but by only watching the, the, the consumption at the entry. But the thing is, it's very, very difficult to do this from an algorithmic point of view. So it's even impossible. I mean, you need to observe a lot of parameters, and this you cannot do it with a cheap device like this. So the goal is to go further and maybe install some submetering points to in order to be able to disaggregate this. And about so here you are sampling a signal which is the instantaneous power consumption at what grain and which with granularity you are doing so. Yeah. So here actually the, the problem with this is that we are. Um, we are not determining the, 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 the granularity. I mean, it's the, the moment you consume one watt, okay. then, then, you, then you, you know that you've consumed it. Mm -hmm. So if you consume a lot of power, you're going to have a high frequency. If you're consuming less power, you're going to have less <coughs> frequency. Uh, it is, I mean, for, by only looking at... What, what, why would you like less than one watt? That's, that seems quite good already, no? Um, what do you see? Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's... Um, it seems good to me, it's, no? uh, Yeah. <laughs> as, as you said, yeah, I'm not the, the data mining expert, but right. we, uh, so we, we started this year. Uh, we are going to start, actually, from the next year, some collaboration with a professor at uh, so, uh, the NCK University in Taiwan in order to see how we can look into this. But if any of you guys is doing data mining and is interested in this, I think this could be a... Yes? Just a very minor remark and then a question. You're yes. talking about what hours, I guess. Yeah, what what is a measure of power? So of course. Are... Of course. Sorry. Yes. That's a minor yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My question is, uh, you say that it's impossible to uh, conclude about the individual loads mm. from the uh, aggregated one. Would it help if you know a priori what are the appliances that you have at home? I mean, and, and if you know the curve of consumption of each of them, too. Well, actually, for the moment, my knowledge about this is purely theoretical. From, our, from what I read, people have had really difficult times getting, getting to, to work this thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is impossible. I think, as you said, that if you know this, it, is, it would be really possible to, to, to get very 
interesting results. And actually, we are aiming to this. We we want to work with. Uh, we have some uh, very nice connections to with Ren, a metropole with the, with the city, and to deploy this and have some experiences with people. And I mean, for for a person in their home, if if we make a mistake. It's not that important. I mean, it's not some industrial setting where if you mistake the TV for a refrigerator, it's going to cause a catastrophe. There is just maybe from time to time we're going to be mistaken. But as you said, I think that this thing will. We are hoping to be to, to be able to use this thing in order to get to get some reasonable results. Maybe not a hundred percent accuracy, but I think seventy percent would be very nice. I think what Daniel is asking is most of the projects you refer to are where there is non-assistance. Basically, you were given an aggregate load and you were supposed to guess. More and more people are going towards hybrid system in which you have some knowledge. The knowledge, the knowledge can be more or less... Uh, it's either because we help you during your learning phase or, or you, you know you have a list of appliances and things like that. It's something we, yeah. we plan to do, but first we have to deploy this in a large square, yeah. and then we have a lot of geek in Ren that will be interested to play with, and can fulfill and say, okay, here it's my fridge, or I was watching TV at that time. So. Yeah. 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 But otherwise, I mean, since it's true that it's difficult to do uh, classification on a constrained device, another option would be to explore this series in the cloud and making the, the classification over there. So, what is the communication? So, the amount of data you would need to send uh, okay so the, the amount of data is uh, it's not that much so for uh, a couple of months of, uh, of observation is about uh, it, it's less than 50 megabytes uh, I don't know the exact mm -hmm. quantity and we have not optimized no, 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 no. we have not optimized it for the moment I mean it's uh, <coughs> we are saying okay this is going to be a problem this is okay it's a big data problem for one data point it's no problem, 50 megabytes. If you have uh, 30 million, it's going to be difficult. But for the moment, it's we're, we're just saving everything in case some sometime afterwards we decide to, you know, look at more. But now, let's suppose that you do have such an information <laughs> classification of those. Yeah. What do you think that can be done with this? What, so what, do you, what do you would like to do with it? So the, 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 things, the thing would be that, uh, okay, uh, there are some exper uh, experimentation that show that uh, if you give some feedback to to people, then you will have five to ten percent reduction in the in their consumption habits. But this thing disappears after two months or something like this because they stop watching this thing. I mean, it's fun <coughs> in the first month and then you just throw it away. So one of the things is to work with uh, some design schools in order to invent objects <coughs> that are uh, that are giving you feedback. All the time, so things that are going to keep going on this uh, on this uh, energy efficient way of living. This is one of the things. Another thing is that uh, there is a startup in Brest, so they have um, uh, they have a carbon uh, dioxide reduction uh, my, like a, a loyalty program, and it's it has been certified by the French state. So. Uh, they are basically having this miles thing. So if you are using less energy, you are gaining this virtual money. And then you can buy some real things with this virtual money. So the thing would be to uh, actually take these things and when, uh, so deploy this in some real homes and then hope, of course we can only hope, that people are going to actually uh, Get more efficient and keep. I mean, keep being efficient after the first month. I mean, th this is fun for one month, but then we, we need to, to have a way to to keep them uh, being efficient. So uh, I mean, consume less, consuming less. So um, this is the thing that we are planning to do in the next uh, six months. Uh, so yes. From a network perspective, so what are the problems? From a network perspective, yeah. this is the yeah. title of your talk. Yes, of course. Uh, well, first of the things was that here we were we were using extremely constrained devices, which are which need to be very very cheap. 
So we started with some extremely constrained devices. Arduino is based on them. So um, we needed to adapt the six level pan stack. So basically the, the functioning of uh, IPv6 uh, in these world sensor networks uh, in order to just be able to fit them on the, on the, on the, on the sensor because the, 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 the hardware was too constrained to, to, to hold the entire IP stack. Uh, this is the, uh, secondly, uh, from architectural point of view, we have uh, the, the introduction of co of co-op, which is still being uh, standardized. So the, uh, also the way to implement it, the way to, uh, to see how it functions, uh, just basically making, making sure that the, the, the network is functional. Also, another point is quite important is security. I mean, I have not mentioned security in, in my talk, but security is the best. I mean, it is one of the cornerstones of smart grids in, in, all, in, all, in, all, the, in, uh, in all uh, in all branches. And uh, here we have also done some work in order to be able to, to uh, uh, to make this work in a user-friendly way, but also in a secure way. Um, after that, I, I don't well, know so if you want to... That, uh, user doesn't have to, to... There is no keyboard, there is no display, so you have to introduce the thing securely in the network, but you have to say, this plug, this many meter, is for this plug, this. and so you have to find easy way to do it. Yeah. That's that. Only technical. Sorry, how much do you consume by sending the information from one watt over the internet in the cloud? Oh, that's a thing that we have not <laughs> measured. <laughs> uh, so for, for, yeah, for the moment, honestly, we were just busy uh, making this work. Um, uh, when we measure it with our rev devices, it's almost, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very little, just for the, for the first link. For the uh, for the link between your power plug and uh, the gateway, it's uh, very little consumption. Afterwards, you know, you can it, it becomes yeah, quite a compli uh, quite a complicated problem. Of course, the things you are the thing you are saying is uh, very very interesting when you when we look at the energy footprint of a system that we say okay we are putting something to increase the efi energy efficiency. I mean, we need to take into account the energy footprint of that thing and. It's, I mean, honestly, for a lot of the systems, it's just okay. It's it's little, and we are not going to calculate this. Even for smart meters, uh, people have been doing some calculations, and they say, okay, all the smart meters we are going to deploy, they will need we will need to build ten nuclear power stations just to 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 to, to make these smart meters run. So. I hope it's uh, it, it, I, I think, yeah, it was, it was uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe one, maybe one, let's say maybe one. one. Okay. <laughs> for machine to machine, they say that. Yeah, for machine so it's a very small devices, I mean, uh, powers, like uh, AA uh, batteries, but when you sum uh, all yeah, of these... Uh, no, so for, the, for the smart meters, okay, so because I, I, I see that, um, okay, I, I'm, I'm fast, so the, the next project actually, uh, which is related to this, the next project on which we were, we were working is, uh, so we are working with, and now I know that I can mention the names of the companies, uh, with uh, iTron and uh, Texas Instruments on uh, routing for PLC, uh, which is uh, basically with the protocol used by ERDF. And uh, so we made a simulator, uh, we developed a simulator based on uh, OpNet, and uh, we also have a validation testbed and uh, we did some preliminary calculations and um, just to answer it, only for the receiving part of a smart meter uh, it consumes uh, about 2.6 kilowatt hours per day for 500, for 500 uh, smart meters so 2.6 kilowatt hours per day for 500 smart meters and this is reception and reception is something that I mean it's always on you cannot of course, we can invent ways to make it sleep, but the way it is implemented, it is always on. Can you repeat? So, two, uh, let, me, let me just advance in the slides. I have it. I don't want to lie you to you. 
So the receiving power is 2.6 kilowatt hours for 24 hours and 540 nodes. So, I mean, okay, 35 million divided by this, it's... Uh, uh, okay, I mean, I cannot, uh, I cannot calculate it right now, but I think it's quite a lot. I mean, it's... Uh, and this is just for the receiving power, the receiving power of, of a smart meter. So, uh, if you include some more additional features into this, it, it becomes just what? a question about the, uh, there is one field, uh, 108 watt, it is uh, the power uh, consumption so for one? For one, one. yes, I, I would suppose. I mean, the, the, these are, the, 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 we did not calculate the receiving power, this was given to us by iTron. They said this is this, and we calculated we calculated the transmitting power. Why did you multiply by thirty-five million? This is for for five hundred, right? This is for five hundred. Yes, I want to. Yes, it was fine too. We have like thirty million or fifty million in France of meters. So you have to divide by five hundred, right? Yeah, yeah, I wanted I wanted to to calculate, but I'm I'm a little bit too. Yeah, I have to divide it. Yes. Okay, we'll do it later. Yeah, we'll do it later. Okay. And just a, a small question, you, you speak about uh, routing by PLT, so it's not a, a star topology? It's just, uh, okay, so <laughs> let me let me just, okay, I, 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 so this is the thing we, we have, so we have the simulator and we have a test bed with 10 uh, nodes, so it's basically 10 smart meters in order to validate the results we have with the simulator. Uh, the simulator is based on OpNet. Uh, and we have two routing protocols, so mesh under and route over, so load and ripple. Load is the thing that is fixed in the standard, and we are interested from a more say, research point of view, what, how does ripple perform against load. So uh, um, load is a reactive protocol, ripple is a proactive protocol. So load constructs the, route, the routes only when it is necessary, and ripple constructs the routes uh, uh, keep the route updated all the time. So uh, the architecture of the simulator is based on uh, uh, so we generate with an external tool a topology network matrix that uh, captures the quality of the links and the relationship between the different meters and this we did because uh, there are quite a lot of uh, power uh, simulators, so simulators that come from the powering, from the power, from the electrical engineering community, and they are very, very complicated. I mean, very realistic to some point, and very, but very complex. So we just wanted to be made, to be able to interface our simulator with this uh, later on. So we are using, we are importing this topology network matrix, and then we are using uh, another way to represent on a, a little bit macro state. The, the changes in the link in order to be able to, to do long-term simulation because if we, if we do a very detailed simulation of the, of the link level of the link layer uh, it takes a lot of time for 1,000 meters for example and we need to simulate uh, 24 hours it may take a lot of time so this is basically the architecture of the simulator so we have a tool that generates the topology and we have the data traffic and we put this into the network simulator then we have the results and we yeah. have the... Mr. Can you go back one slide? Of course, yes. Uh, I don't get something about the vector entry state. So there we have a medium, so a shared medium yes. between all the nodes. So you also have a MAC uh, protocol, medium access protocol. Yes. Which is not uh, the, between the two one you were mentioning before, which is based on time slotting or something like this. Well, that's PLC. That's oh, it's PLC, it's already doing the, it's physical and MAC. It looks like uh, okay. 15 or 4. Yes. Okay. It, it, it is, so the, the physical layer is it's quite uh, strange actually, it's uh, like wireless medium, but it's, uh, you have a very, the, the power of the, 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 the power signal actually, the, the electrical power is quite powerful. And uh, also the cables have not been constructed to, to, um, to pass data, so they are not shielded. So you have a lot of external noises that come uh, and uh, that are going to influence the signal and you also 
we are studying this in another thing, you are polluting the, the environment and, around. And, and, the, and the second question was about the routing, so who needs to route where? So the destination, I mean, would you make a smart meter talking to a smart meter, or this is completely useless? So, I'm not sure. okay. so this is this is the general topology we are generating. <coughs> so we have the you have the substation here, and all the smart meters are uh, are sending the information to the substation, and it, it is the substation that is also able to to that is also going to uh, from time to time uh, send data to the smart meters. Theoretically, it is possible to also route data. Um, uh, between two smart meters, but we did not have. Uh, for the moment, it is out of the. I mean, it's not on the table. From from uh, from realistic data point, uh, traffic point of view, there is no traffic between two smart meters. Theoretically, it's possible. So this is the typical uh, architecture. You have three phases of, of current that part through from from the from the substation, and uh, you have uh, diaphony. So from one phase can talk to the other phase. So it's basically like a tree, stu like a tree structure with three uh, separate uh, branches that go in parallel. But because of attenuation and, um, and uh, variances in the medium, uh, you need to route the data. You need to route the information. So you need to, uh, to, to, to route the data, even if it is a fairly simple uh, very simple. I don't understand because why can't you have a fixed routing? Why can't? Um, why would you do something proactive or whatever? Why, if this is this kind of uh, of uh, architect topology, why okay. can't you have a fixed routing once and for all? So one other thing is that, and, and that's a very important thing that mm -hmm. we, it's not in the results yet. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, you have asymmetric links, so you. Uh, and, you, and the, the quality of the links varies quite a lot. But do you have multiple paths? You have, you have multiple paths. Um, the things we observe. Uh, okay. You are you are you are saying uh, like run a, a single uh, route. Uh, uh, run a. I mean. Configure in some static way with some with some protocol. Configure the routes, or yeah, you I'm saying if you have uh, if you have only one path from mm. the smart meter to the substation, you learn it once and for all, and that's it. There is no multipath and no diversity in uh, this level. So now, uh, okay, um, basically the, the the standard that as it has been specified, they use load, which is a reactive protocol, and it is uh, quite simple. So. Uh, some of the smart meters want to talk to the substation, so he sends a, a broadcast storm in order to find the substation, and then you, you, the substation will send an answer, and, it, uh, the, and a route will be fixed for a given time, uh, for, for example, for, for one hour. The condition can change, so you, you cannot fix the route. Um, if, how you can fix this route? Because you need to go to the node to fix it. So uh, the system has to be configured by itself. Yeah, but I have a feeling that load was invented with wireless below, right? Mm. So I don't, I'm not sure it's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that, exactly. Right? it, it, it is in uh, the notation mm. from AUDB, uh, uh, from, from Meshnet. Ripple is doing what, I mean, actually both are, you, you, we use, the parameters are going to be used in this way to, you build the topology once and then you try to keep it stable for, for a long time. We can discuss that. Too. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And in, in this scenario, uh, yeah. if we uh, are looking uh, in, in the aspect of machine to machine, the uh, the meter is the gateway. Cannot um. because the, the the meter can uh, receive and transmit data. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have changed the ticket. Is a router. It means that internally you can uh, relay information towards the substation. But you, yeah, but you are, uh, you are not a router for uh, home network traffic, for example, because you are very, you can create dinner dinner of service very easily. You just do a simple thing and you press the network. Okay. I mean, it is an IP level router. You don't, you don't do any, any anything intelligent. You are 
sending an IP packet from somewhere and it passes through. Sure, sure, but and so it the, uh, the the sensors uh, you are deploying at home, they will send uh, data through. Okay, well, uh, now in, in instead of uh, doing this. Uh, here, this is uh, controlled by, by the utility. So you have these are smart meters, <coughs> and this is a very controlled thing. So we are not going to be able to touch on this. This is a proprietary thing. So you do, here we. We cannot plug into this as as a open networking guys. We cannot even if we have the smart meter at home. We cannot interfere with it. Yes. So yeah, okay. another question about routing. So yeah. I'm a smart meter. I want to talk to the substation. Yeah. Aren't we physically connected? So at layer two. So I just need the. No, you. There are multiple ops. There, so there, there are multiple ops. Yeah. So I'm, I'm talking to the next guy who's talking to the next guy in order to send my data to the substation. Yes. Yes. Okay. And one other thing is that the medium, I mean, the medium is so variable that sometimes maybe you are going to do something like this. You know, it's okay. com so sometimes we see some completely illogical things from point of view, from networking point of view. We we said, okay, it's a tree; it's going to be fairly simple. And when we implemented it, and when we really got into looking at the details, we see, okay, uh, there are some difficulties here that are somewhat un unexpected. Mm -hmm. Oh, one of the things is, for example, you try to send to you know that your parent is this one, so you, you send uh, you try to to contact him, but there is some communications around here with, because here it's closer to the substation, so it, you have a lot of collisions. So you try, you try, you try for a lot of time, and then at some point your Mac level protocol will decide, okay, my parent is dead, I cannot reach, I cannot reach him. So you will start looking for another route, and you you will go back. And then the, the, the guy that's backwards, he's going to start reaching the same node. And this time, because maybe the, the broadcast storm has passed, he will pass through the same one. So you have a route that, it, that goes forward and goes backward and goes again forward because of changes in the Mac layer condition. So it is, um, it, it is interesting to see how this really works. And it, um, so one of the things is that uh, this protocol was it was deployed in Lyon. With uh, there are three hundred thousand smart meters that have been deployed, and uh, uh, I think that they had seen some of the problems from from this. I don't know. Maybe there were also some political reasons, but the experimentation was halted at some point, and then some new additions to the specifications were made. And now, at some point, of course, the deployment will will going to restart, but. Uh, it is interesting to, to be able to see why this happens because otherwise you just deploy 300,000 meters and it's not very clear if you have a problem why does it happen because people have made some farms some like 5,000 meters deployed in a very regular grid in some controlled environment and then they, they, run the, they run the protocols and everything works okay and then they put it in the in the hot, in, in the real environment, and problems start to, to come. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, so, so these smart meters, yes. uh, in, in this work, uh, are supposed to, to send uh, aggregate uh, statistics, uh, metering information, or fine grained? Because I'm thinking about the combination with the previous work. Uh, so we have uh, fine grained information detail about each device and we have the smart meter and then we go to this level. So one thought is that if we have this fine grained information and have this multiple uh, translated to multiple uh, packets and they say pieces of information going that way, Maybe we increase this contention. This uh, exactly. So, so do you think uh, we need some balance between the these two areas? Uh, have you been working on that? Maybe. So uh, that, that's a, actually a very a very good question. Here, the <coughs> the bandwidth is very very limited. So if we want to push a, a, a very detailed traffic, it's it's not going to work for a, a dense environment. It's not going to work. So we were thinking about making some, uh, so this was actually one of the projects that was uh, submitted by us and there were some, also some people from uh, Telecom Paris Tech that was to say, okay, we have the smart meter and we only use the, back, the backbone for some very, for, for, the, for the most fundamental uh, pieces of data. 
like maybe you can exchange some encryption keys only there and maybe just send the data for every 15 minutes and then you use the internet so you pass through your free box or something else to push the data very on a much more fine-grained scale but politically it was rejected because this idea is not very uh, well received by uh, by, by the utilities. I mean, the utilities, they want to keep control of this, mm -hmm. so they are they basically say, okay, this is our network, and nobody has the right to to, to touch it. We say what what goes in there, and... Uh, but the, the investment of uh, uh, EDF on this is not only to switch uh, from the, the night uh, tariff to, to the day tariff. I mean, I'm sure they, there is a business plan uh, behind. Like, perhaps... Uh, uh, saving energy, uh, uh, saying to the, the, the users, uh, uh, perhaps uh, during the, 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 the day you can switch up this and this and automate this. So, you're right about this. Now, as a researcher, from the things I, I read as possibilities, things to, that are possible to do with the smart meters, I was actually quite disappointed by the, by the functionalities that were integrated into the smart meter. So, it is something that's going to work. It's going to have. It's going to provide some services, but uh, it's going to be quite limited, from my point of view. Now, they, at some point, they, the specification was no communication whatsoever with the house. So you, you deploy 35 million things that are going to cost two billion euros or more, and five years afterwards, you cannot use it for demand response. And the, spe the specification afterwards changed, so now you can put in a Zigbee chip, so you can do some things. But I don't know how you do this. I mean, I don't know. You, you must be, maybe you must be orange and you got to go and pay. To, I, I don't know how it works. So uh, it is somewhat frustrating to see this. Yeah. But we have a bilateral lab with PDF, and we raised this question last Thursday. And they are supposed to bring us, bring us an answer in the coming day. I get, if you can footprint the energy consumption of some people, then you know all the appliances in 35 million houses in France, so you've got the biggest uh, database that can sell to anybody. So this is potentially interesting for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, for, for now, I think it's the law that the data, be, the data belongs to ERDF. Or EDF. I mean, it's ERDF. ERDF. So it does not belong to you. So you can, <laughs> you have to pay, or they they will, they will give you some website. But nowadays, the only thing that they, uh, is mandatory for ERDF is to provide the minimum information which is required for accounting for sending a bill. Mm -hmm. This is what this is, is the, uh, in the regulation mm -hmm. today. So yeah. I mean, and your home network is uh, your network. It doesn't belong to ERDF. We had actually one. Yeah, yes. But about the privacy issues, I, I read that uh, uh, EDF or ERDF is not supposed to know uh, what is the exact uh, usage of, of uh, if, if someone is starting a TV or uh, a wash machine then in his home, then this information is, is private and should not be known. So what does this imply on, on, on your... Uh, the point is that you can imagine that this type of thing will be sold as a service. It's, you, are not a, uh, it's not, you are not obliged to buy the service. But if you agree to receive the service that will help you to optimize the energy, then uh, you will accept that uh, the company will know that they... As a part of the general agreements. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So... Okay. Um. I, I, because the time has advanced quite, quite, quite a lot, so I just wanted to, to finish this talk by saying, okay, we are networking guys, going to the smart grid, so the thing is go through our uh, uh, industrial partners, you know, and uh, also for the electrical vehicles, I did not mention we have a project on electrical vehicles, so go through the industrial partners and go also with the community, so it's two different things we do and uh, it helps us to, to, to work. So the key is, of course, always use open standard-based approaches. 
like IP. <laughs> and uh, with this, I'd like to thank Are you, you for sure your attendance. this recommendation. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Walking, but <laughs> <laughs> because, because the, 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 the biggest and stronger company worldwide today is not using standard, right? Uh, just uh, which, uh, which is uh, it's EDF, right? Mm -hmm. no? I'm talking about April. Right? April. Mm. Let's say that they managed to use the standards in a way just to keep them a little bit close, but they, I mean. Yeah, if you're referring to this, uh, yeah, that's that's a different that's a different story. But uh, uh, no, I mean, um, in the ne on the networking side, open. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much, and thank you for having me.